Starchy. Mm. Which one, Jim? Twelve across. Oh, good man playful at end of day is very formal. Oh, yes, starchy. <laughs> You're doing well this morning. Mm. We both are, Christine. We'll have it finished in no time. We seem to do better working as a team. Well, no sense both of us struggling on our own with the same crossword. No. No, it's not doing my waistline any good. Go on, have another biscuit. Oh, um... They'll only go stale otherwise. Well, uh, perhaps just one more. I bought them for you, really. Hmm. You shouldn't encourage me. I was talking to Jennifer in the shop yesterday and suddenly remembered I'd nothing in for elevenses. I thought Brian and Jennifer were going off somewhere. Hmm. The Maldives. Oh, yes. They were staying near Gatwick last night, then flying out this morning. I wouldn't mind some winter sun. Well, it's not so bad outside today. Hmm. Climber confuses marbles and succumbs to overdose. Um, which one? Eight down. I keep looking at it, but it's not helping. Three, four and five. Funnily enough, I don't envy them. I really enjoy being in Ambridge at this time of year. Uh -huh. I've never really outgrown Christmas, especially putting up decorations. I used to fill the old house with greenery. You put up quite a bit in here as well. I used to drive George mad sometimes. I'm in the woods all day and then come home to a forest. It does look very seasonal. And I never tire of the silver band playing while we light up the green. Oh, yes. That's the real start of Christmas in Ambridge. I'm doing the countdown at the ball this year and switching on their lights. Why are you doing it? Well, Jolene ran an impromptu sweepstake last night. Only a couple of pounds to enter, raising money for the elms. Oh, what a nice idea. So I thought, why not? It'll be good fun, starting off the sequence of lights round the green. Oh. What? Oh, nothing important. Well done on winning. Now, let's see. Climber confuses marbles and succumbs to overdose. <clears throat> You're very welcome to come up and help, Lindy. No, no, Robert. The loft is your domain. I'm simply glancing in to see how you're getting on. Well, I found all the indoor lights we used last year. Oh, that's a very good start. But I'm sure there are at least two more sets. Do you remember the little lamps from our Victorian Christmas? Well, didn't we recycle those? Oh, I'm sure we didn't. Have you looked in the corner, Robert? That's what I'm trying to do. Of course, if they'd all been put away properly. I put all the working lights away properly. I didn't realise we were setting up a retirement home for the rest. We need as many as possible. The village hall simply swallows decorations. Can't you borrow some? There isn't enough time, really. Cabaret night will be on us before we know it. Why are we still keeping this dreadful plastic wall, Russ? Robert, it's a piece of personal history. <sighs> My spell with the Sunningdale players was a golden time. Especially our dance interpretation of Nanook of the North. It's been stuck up here for years. Oh, well. You never know when it'll come in useful. In you go again. Might be easier if you knelt down, Robert. Thank you, Lindy. That had occurred to me. We want to make the hall look thoroughly festive, especially if James and Leonie are taking photos. Uh-uh. Ah, Let's ah, fill it with colour and pizzazz. Every on. table a feast for the eye. This is more promising. <gasps> table decorations. <sighs> Robert, give me the walrus. What? Oh! Mind your head. Oh. A table decoration competition with a prize for the best one. That's the answer, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. Well, I did think you might be a little more enthusiastic. Do you see, Cathy? The way he's smiling? Oh, uh, yes. If you look at... This is John at the same age, more or less. Well, there is a, a definite likeness. Likeness? It's incredible. The minute I saw it, he's the absolute image of him. He's certainly very like him in, in some but ways. His smile, the way he's holding himself. Look... 
and I've been getting some old photos out. If you look at John's eyes here, and perhaps you can't quite... Or well, maybe if we enlarge there. Now, there. That is John's son, isn't it? Oh, I can see why you think so. It is. That, that's John's grin. Yeah, well, you could well be right, Pat. I know I am. But it's only one photo at one angle. It's all I need, Cathy. As soon as I saw it, I knew. Well, well yes, but with something like this... Pat, hang on, really... hang on. There's a photo of John in the dairy somewhere. Um, there. Look at his chin. Do you see, Cathy? Do you see... Oh, thanks again for the coffee. Shame about the crossword there. Yeah, isn't it frustrating? Just the one clue defeating us. Don't worry about seeing me off. You mustn't let the cold in. Oh, it's not too bad. I should come out and do some tidying. Oh, your garden's looking perfectly respectable. If you ignore all the leaves that have blown in. I'll sweep round later if you like. No, that's all right, Jim. I don't mind. I can do it after I put my lights up. Thank you, but I need the fresh air and exercise. When are yours going up? I'm waiting for Eddie to ring back. He usually hangs them for me. Though I'm afraid it'll be a reduced display this year. Oh? Well, normally he uses some clips on the, on the gutter. But if you look... Ah, the brackets come away at the end. Yeah, I'm afraid one or two have worked loose. The wind last night didn't help. It shouldn't take much to fix them. I'll ask Eddie to take a look. Oh, no need to ask him. I can manage a simple oh, job like that. Oh, Jim. And hang your lights at the same time. It's too high. Not at all. I don't like to bother you with my problems. It's not a problem. It's a challenge. And I like challenges. Sorry. Oh, don't be silly. You'd barely walk through the door. I understand. And I'd drag you to the laptop, bombard you with old photos. I was happy to look at them. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd better put them away before anyone comes in. It's been quite upsetting for Tom and Helen. Of course. They find it very hard to talk about. So I have to bottle it up. Which is why, as soon as you got here... I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop apologising. You don't think I'm wrong, do you? Wanting to know? No. When I saw his face... Yes, of course. I just wonder... What? Well, perhaps going over and over it isn't really helping. That's what Tom thinks. Oh? He's very clear about it. He doesn't want me to get in touch with Sharon at all. Well... To be fair, he's thinking about Helen as much as himself. She's taken it badly. Oh, she's completely closed off. Poor girl, I, I, I was so clumsy the way I told them. Oh, I can't imagine there's an easy way. No. So I, I can see why. But just to forget about it now? How can they stand not knowing? Look, the last time we talked, you thought it might be best to leave things as they are. Move on. I know. And if your children think the same... Yes, you're probably right, Cathy. But if I don't get in touch, how do I stop myself thinking about that boy every second of the day? Right, now, let's see. Ooh. Oh, that's not bad. Well, they're in much better shape than I expected. There, there's a bulb missing here. Yeah, and here, but they're not circuit breakers. Do we have any spares? Well, the Victorian set's the same fitting, so if I cannibalise that... Oh, yes. That'll give us five working sets. And Vicky's promised another two. Uh, that'll be enough, won't it? With some tinsel tacked up as well. And the table decorations. Um, yes. Y you're not really going to use that walrus in yours, are you? Why not? Well, I thought table decorations were all, you know, flowers and tinsel and... Oh, reindeer are popular at Christmas. But reindeer, yeah, but... What? Well, he looks rather sinister. No, 
he doesn't. Like a walrus with a murky past. Oh, Robert, I have more important things to worry about, like having enough tables. There are plenty in the hall. Not sufficient for the numbers we're expecting. Right, let's see if these do the trick. Tickets are starting to sell well, at last, thanks to the food theme. Uh, that's, that's one. Alan's sure to know where we can get some more. Oh, and I must find some nice napkins when we go to Felpersham. There we are, Lindy. Another set working again. Oh, well done. It looks rather good. And we'll have to see if we can find anything for Leone and Coriander while we're there. Oh, yes. Um, Coriander's given me the name of a book she wants for Christmas. I've written it down somewhere. And we should buy James something this year. Uh, now he's virtually part of the family. Question is what? A big box of tact and diplomacy. <laughs> Oh, look, there's Jim. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll let him in. <clears throat> oh, afternoon, Jim. Come in. Uh, do you mind? No, not at all. It's only for a moment. Afternoon, Linda. Hello, Jim. Uh, oh, my goodness. He's a striking fellow, isn't he? <laughs> a memento of my time with the Sunningdale players. What a terrifying expression. Isn't it just... There's a walrus who knows where the penguins are buried. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you want to see me about cabaret night, Jim? Oh, no, no. I was hoping to pick your husband's brains, Linda. Oh, yeah? I need some sound advice from a man who knows his way around a toolbox. What are you doing in here, Pat? Cleaning up the leaks for tomorrow. What, now? Yes. I've got nothing else to do, and there are plenty to get through. But you haven't stopped all afternoon. We'll need a lot in the shop tomorrow, and sweets. I was going to come in after milking to get the order ready. You won't have to now. You didn't even stop for a cup of tea after lunch. I didn't want one. Well, how about coming in for half an hour, having a breather? It's all right. I'm perfectly happy getting the veg ready. But there's no need for you to weigh yourself out. Actually, there is. Every need. Because at the moment, it's the only way I can see of getting through the whole day without screaming. So if you don't mind, Tony, I'll just carry on as I am. Do be careful, Jim. I am being careful. You're leaning too far over. If I fix this side of the bracket first, the rest will be much easier. Oh, Neil... Oh, morning, Christine. Could you possibly help me hold the ladder? Yes, of course. Oh, I'd feel happier if there were two of us. There's really no need. I'll be finished in a minute or two. That's all the time it takes to have an accident. Uh, uh, Christine, perhaps it's better if I... Ah, oh. oh, that's it. Peggy thought she'd be all right without her glasses for a moment yesterday. Oh? What happened? She tripped over one of her cats. Oh, no. Uh, that's in... Bill, I think. Fortunately, the doctor says it's a sprain, not a fracture. Ah, all the same, it must have been quite a shock. Shula says right. her ankle's ballooned up. She won't be able to get around properly for days. Ah, that's the trouble with cats. They're like other people's children. Always getting under your feet. She's being very reasonable. Emily? Yeah, letting us have a last look on our own. You're not trying to pressure us. Oh, she wouldn't, Elizabeth. She's not like that. How long did you say you've known her, Shula? Oh, since way back. Before she even set up the school. She certainly put Casper through his paces, letting us take him out on grass and the road. Yeah, he was very comfortable being tacked up, weren't you, boy? And neither of the stable girls seem to have any trouble handling him. Mm. You know, the smaller girl's not so far off Freddy's size. Yeah, I noticed that. So, what do you think? Well, it's got to be yours and Freddy's decision in the end. I know. But he's a very nice pony. My favourite of the ones we've seen. Is it really worth bringing Freddy to see him? I don't want to get his hopes up for nothing. Well, Casper seems a definite possibility to me. And he's got a good temperament, anyway. Mm, he backed out of the stall well, and he wasn't spooked by the motorbike. You don't think he's too old? Oh, no, no, no. Ten's not bad. <laughs> yes, we're talking about you. No, he's had plenty of experience, but he's still got a good few years left in him. You know, I can imagine Freddy riding him, <laughs> so can I. I'd just like to know why Emily's selling him now. Oh, that's easy. She's feeling the pinch, the same as the rest of us. When did she say that? 
When I rang to ask if she knew of anything suitable. Oh. They've lost nearly half their livery this year. Oh, gosh. And they're giving far fewer lessons. Parents don't have the money anymore. No, the only thing still going up are costs. We're all suffering that, aren't we? So, very reluctantly, she's having to let him go. Well, then. And you can't see any problems? No, nope, nothing obvious. His coat's in good condition. So are his hooves. I mean, if you do decide to buy... Oh, yes, I'll get a vet to check him over properly. I was going to say... Though it's rather out of the way for Alistair. No, don't worry. Nigel met someone in Westbury through the Shire Horses. I'll give him a ring. Oh, yeah, that'd be much easier. Right then. I think we'll be seeing you again, Casper. Are you going to sort out a second visit now? Yeah, and talk about the price again. I suppose that's the only thing to worry about, until you actually put child and pony together. Yes, I know. Though I have a feeling Freddie will like him. I do hope so, Shula. I want him and Lily to have a really good birthday. Balance out some of the bad memories. Yes, switch them on, Christine. That's it. Are they working? See for yourself. Oh, yes. Obviously, they don't look at their best in daylight. Very festive. Ah, not too bad. I like the way you've looped some round the drain pipe. There was enough slack to do it, so why not? Oh, thank you so much, Jim. Not at all. You've been to so much trouble. Well, I meant what I said. I enjoy a challenge. At least now I won't be letting the side down on Thursday. Oh, yes. I need to ask a favour about that. What do you want me to do? Since I'll be at the ball for the countdown, I've asked Joe to switch my lights on. He'd just come out of the bathroom covered in shaving foam when I called round. Shaving foam? I told him there's nothing to it. It's the same setup as you've got, but if you could just keep an eye on him. Old man's beard. I'm sorry? Old man's beard. Climber confuses, marbles and succumbs to overdose. Well, of course. Why didn't I think of that? All right. All right. Oh, don't fuss. I only want to see why you're hobbling. That's it. Hold still now. Neil? Up a little nick, haven't you? Making cheese on toast before I go to the shop. Want me to put some on for you? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind, Susan. Two slices. Ah, uh, please. Mm. You need to clean that up. All right, give me ten minutes. Is Tracy having lunch with us? What difference does that make? Well, I was wondering if she's had a look yet. At what? The property guides I brought back. Oh. Neil. Well, she's had them a couple of days now, and rented places go so quick. I don't want you coming in if you're going to be difficult. I'm not being difficult. I'm trying to help. Frankly, I'm not in the mood. I've had enough of Pat being impossible all morning. Oh? She's dead. Running round non-stop. I don't know what she was thinking of. Oh, not too bad. Certainly not hazelnut yoghurt. I wondered if a little chat might help. Oh, yeah? Obviously, something was bothering her. So, I waited till a lull before the mixed fruits. Then I asked her about the family. Uh-huh. Yeah, that should do it. Just general chit-chat, you know, like whether everything was all right. Mm-hmm. Any unexpected developments lately? Oh! You didn't ask if she'd phoned Sharon? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Not straight out like that. Susan, we agreed to keep out of it. I was only thinking of her. She looked like she needed to talk. But when I tried being thoughtful, I only got my head bitten off. Everything's pretty much in place. They were working on the last stall when I left. Oh, no. What is it this time? Oh, I can't see... I should have listened to you and stayed on the dual carriageway. At least we haven't come to a complete stop. <laughs> Not quite. So, deck the hall starts tomorrow. For the public, yes. We have some corporate guests coming tonight to use the ice rink. Oh, I must get over one evening. I do like your German market. It's good, isn't it? Mm. One or two people have asked if we're having the highwayman again this year. Oh. 
He obviously made quite an impression last time. <laughs> Nigel and Kenton had a lot of fun. Yes. But he enjoyed it so much. I know. There was one family last year, three small children and two harassed parents. So he decided to cheer them up. He jumped out and did the most ridiculous trick you've ever seen. <laughs> he had the children laughing so much there were tears rolling down their cheeks. Oh, he was wonderful with children, wasn't he? I don't remember what I was supposed to be doing. On my way to the orangery or something. I just saw him and stopped. He didn't know I was watching. <laughs> A stupid dance. And then he let the father try on his three-cornered hat. <laughs> he loved entertaining people. Brought him so much joy, Shula. There's no other word for it. No. Even when I was mad with him, I'd see him do something like that. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be, Elizabeth. I like hearing you talk about Nigel. <laughs> do you? Yes. He was an important part of my life, too. You mustn't think any of us have forgotten about him. I walked round with Lily and Freddie last night while the stalls were being made ready. All the lights were on. Oh, it was quite magical. For the first time in ages, I almost felt relaxed. Mm. Happy. Because some stupid part of me was expecting Nigel to jump out at any moment. Lizzie, I'm here. Oh, you'll start me off as well. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, have you thought any more about Christmas dinner? You and the children coming to us? Oh, uh, well, it's a really kind offer. Oh, we'd love to see you all. Though I warned you, didn't I? It's going to be very quiet. Just Mum, Jim and Christine, apart from my lot. Yeah, and, and afterwards it's an open house? Well, we'll be having tea later, and if anyone else wants to drop in and say Happy Christmas. Mm. If you're worried about making work, we've ordered an enormous turkey. It's... Uh, it's really kind of you, but... Uh, oh, go on, Elizabeth. I, I've been so busy getting ready for Deck the Hall. I haven't had time to work out what we're doing for Christmas yet. Sorry, Shula, I, I can't commit to anything. in here for? I'm not hiding. I'm putting the new seal in. Oh, do you have to do it now? You're the one complaining the washing machine's leaking. Only a little. No wonder with all the use it's getting. Oh, come and have a seat down first. Tracy and the children haven't seen you all day. I'd rather get on with this. Oh, it looks rude. If I leave it till later, Tracy will only grumble about the noise when the children go to bed. Oh. It's not as though you said a lot during tea. I was annoyed, that's why. <sighs> if this is about Dad and Gary coming for Christmas Day... I'm... No, it's not that. At least they'll be going home afterwards. Oh, Neil. I'm sorry, Susan, but it's very aggravating. Tracy put in the property guide straight in the recycling box. She's not ready to look for anywhere else yet. She's still worrying about money. Well, if she needs some help with a deposit... No, it's I... not that. She's just got to work out her benefits first and then start getting some money from Dan. I realise it's not easy. No, it isn't. And I'm not trying to push her out of the house, but she needs to start thinking about the future. She is. She can't keep dragging Brad and Chelsea to school the other side of Felpersham every day. Well, she might not have to much longer. Oh? She's been in touch with the local authority. About what? Seeing if there's any chance of them going to Loxley Barrett after Christmas. She wants Brad and Chelsea to go to Loxley Barrett? It'd make life so much easier. Not for us, it oh, won't. Oh, don't be so pessimistic. Once she's found her feet, Tracy will be good company. I'm sure I'll enjoy having her around. So that's what she's planning? Staying on here? Well, somewhere local... Exactly how long for, Susan? All I mean, Mum... Yes, I know you want to get down, Henry. Annie said she wanted calories and salad. She does, but... Oh, 
You'll get grubby if I put you down. I did check, Helen. I asked Dad before I started. All right. Oh, you should be OK there. Oh. She definitely wants both. I was just... Well, I chatted to her last night and she said we'd been sending too much pak choy and mizuna. Oh, for heaven's sake, will that girl ever make her mind up? How's anyone supposed to know what she wants? Everything all right? <laughs> Sorry, Helen. Sorry, Henry. Is there a problem with the order? No. It's only Granny being silly, that's all. We're fine, Dad. No need to fuss, Henry. We were just discussing what to send to organics. Oh, right. Um, well, better go easy on the leaves. Tony? Well, Anya says we're not moving as much as usual. But you said she wanted some Mizuna. Well, yes, some, but well, probably not this much. Oh, I suppose it is quite a lot. It'll pick up again after Christmas, when everyone's on a diet. I'm making the delivery, so why don't I finish off? I'll throw in some more calabrese and the last of the peppers. I can't even get a simple order right now. I'm not saying that, Mum. Uh, OK. Susan was in the yard a moment ago, looking a bit lost. Oh, what is it now? Well, I'm not sure. Um, something to do with the ice cream? Oh, I suppose I'd better go and see. I'm sorry, Helen. No, it's fine. You know your mother didn't mean to snap. There's nothing, Dad. Well, at the moment, she's... Well, it's all been such a terrible shock. Yes, I know. Nick, we can start chucking this lot in now. Oh, for such a small tree, it's created a heck of a mess. Yeah, and it had to crash down right across the track into Spitfire. Oh. You might not have spotted the mistletoe otherwise. Where'd you put it? Oh, in the cab. Yeah, I'll hang it up when we get home. Oh. Yep, hang on. That needs two of us. Yeah. Right. Oh, thanks. That's it. Uh, well, I was serious. If you need to get off... I oh, know, I'm OK for another half an hour. Well, I can easily clear this on my own. Well, you made the time to see Caroline with me, so I'm happy to help out with this. <sighs> it went pretty well, didn't it? Sorting out the seating plan? Yeah, don't know why I've been fretting about Gloria. <sighs> She'll be fine. On the table next to the Tuckers? Yeah, of course she will. And people always move around at reception anyway. <laughs> yeah, once they've had a few drinks. <sighs> Oh, it was weird. Actually being in the room, you know, seeing where everyone's going to sit on the day. I know. And have to help him mum with her outfit. Yeah, she loves that dress, you know. <laughs> oh, she does, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, it's all starting to feel real. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, well, now you're asking. Will? <laughs> I can't wait, Nick. Oh, me neither. Mm. As long as we get through the stag and hen nights in one piece. <sighs> Roy still won't tell me where we're going. Oh, he'll make sure it's a good night, whatever you do. <laughs> He's promised it'll be a laugh. Oh, I, I need a hand with this one as well. Oh, OK. Well, I reckon he was talking to oh. Neil about it in the bull last night. Yeah. You ready? One, two. <clears throat> Clammed up as soon as they saw me. Oh, they probably were then. <sighs> After that, Neil wouldn't stop going on about Tracy's kids. <laughs> he says... <clears throat> They're totally out of control most of the time. Oh, he's just been old-fashioned. I think Brad's adorable. What that cute little ponytail. They're not <laughs> so adorable if they're screaming and fighting non-stop. <sighs> That's why Neil ended up in the pub. He needed a break. Was, um, Fallon serving last night? No, Reese and Jolene. Oh, she's done me such a big favour. Fallon, I mean, taking on my hen night. Well, have you sorted out who's coming? <laughs> Nearly. So, it's going to be a stretch limo heading for a club in style. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's great. She's doing all the organising and everything. Yeah, very nice. Will? Hmm? What's that dreamy look for? Oh, just remembering a hen night I saw in Borchester once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They were all dressed as nurses. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, Will Grundy, or you will need medical attention. <laughs> oh, I, I only mean they all look like Florence Nightingale. Yeah, right. <laughs> Careful, Henry. Uh, fascinated, isn't he? Oh, 
I always try to grab anything shiny, don't you? The more dangerous, the better. Uh, little boys usually do. <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult to sleep, Dad. Yes, I know, love. The way Mum sprang it on us last week. I think she wishes she'd done it a little differently now. Absolutely knocked me sideways. It brought back so many dreadful memories. Yes, well, of course it did, love. It's the same for me, for all of us. A couple more, do you think? And it's the latest I can remember having any left to cut. Hmm. <laughs> you ready for lunch? Should we get some yoghurt and banana? Yeah. I, I suppose... It... The one reason I can see you for ringing, Sharon... Dad... I I'll just say this one thing, please. Go on. Well, I'm not saying we should or we shouldn't, but... If we knew the truth about Rich, all right, it'd be painful at first. Very. But in the long run, it might help us deal with the way we feel about John. Dad, I cannot tell you how much I disagree. Oh, well... I don't want to get upset, because... Henry's had a funny sort of morning already. No, no, you mustn't. But even talking about it... Oh. Fine, and I won't say anything else. It churns me up every time. I, I can't keep looking back. No, no, I understand, Helen. I'm getting in touch with Sharon won't solve anything. It'll only create more problems for the boy, for us. I, I can't stand it, Dad. OK, message received. That's my last word on the subject. And you know Tom feels exactly the same. Yes, yes, I do. You and Mum simply mustn't take this any further. OK. I'm absolutely convinced about that. You are bringing the kiddies on Thursday, will you? Yeah, of course we are, Grandad. Yeah, well, that's why I called round special. I don't want you to miss it this year. Oh, we never do. Isn't that right? We're taking Jake and Mia to the green on Thursday. For the lighting up? Definitely. I see. Yeah, oh, where are they now, then? Oh, they're in the living room. Ah. Jake's helping Mia colour in a picture of Rudolph. Well, you tell him i got a special job this year. Oh, what's that, Joe? Switching the prof's lights on for him. Oh, yeah. Jim's at the bull, isn't he? Oh, he was in quite a tangle till I agreed, but I'm happy to pull me weight. It's such a big night for the village. Of course it is. Anyone want topping up before I sit down? Oh, yeah, I'm all right, uh, Well, if there's a drop left in the pot... Oh, I uh, think so. Uh, <laughs> Grandad was... Uh, just admiring our advent calendars. Yeah, it's uh, very much stuff. So. Yeah, they're taking over, aren't they? <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting to see four. Well, there's the one Clary gave us. Yeah, that's the holy one. Yeah, we got one of them too. Then we had to get one each with chocolates for Jake and Mia. And... Only as soon as George came over and saw what they were getting. Oh, it's ridiculous, really, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to treat them all the same. Yeah, oh, oh that was another thing I came over for. Yeah, where's my carrier? Uh, this it, Grandad? Yeah, oh, dark. I brought something for you two. Oh, yeah? yeah and then I can uh, get it out. Mia yeah. was trying to sing as well, <laughs> except she keeps calling him the lead nose reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, there we are. A great big bunch of mistletoe. Oh, uh, actually, Grandad. Uh, that's lovely, Ow. Joe. Really lovely. Yeah, well, there's a good lot of berries on it and all. Yeah, there are, aren't there? Well. Oh, yeah. I'll hang it in the living room later. We've been doing very well this year, me and your dad. We've shifted a load of greenery. Oh, that's good. Sabrina Sweet bought a great bag full of Ollie off me this afternoon. Said it's for a table decoration at Cabaret Night. Yeah. Table decoration? Yeah. Well, have we got to have one of those if we're going? Oh, no, it's only if you're taking part in the competition. Oh. No, I don't expect she'll make it herself. She'll end it over that nice little cleaning lady of hers. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, and she bought some mistletoe. So I've written the last thing she needs is encouragement. <laughs> mm, this is a nice bunch, Joe. Yeah, much better than some mother mistletoe I've seen. It's great. Thanks very much. Yeah, and I'll have an even better surprise for you later in the week. Oh, yeah? What's that? Well, who's it a surprise, William, if I tell you now? Come and sit down, Pat. No, I'm all right. I want to finish clearing up. You barely sat down to eat supper. Come and have a cup of tea with me. No, no, I'll get one later. Before I went to organics, I had a bit of a chat with Helen. Uh-huh. About Rich. Oh, I thought she'd probably say something. 
After I made such an idiot of myself. You didn't. She's still very raw. Yes, I can see that. Got a feeling that's why she didn't want to eat with us this evening. Oh? I think she didn't want to be with us. In case we started talking about Rich and John again. <sighs> Did she say anything to you? Uh, not much. No interest in finding out yet? No. None at all? She doesn't want to know if her brother had a son? It's not a question of wanting, Pat. Helen simply can't face going back, reliving the past. But it's not the past, Tony. Rich is alive now. She's thought it all through, in her own way, and made exactly the same decision as Tom. I thought perhaps if we gave her time... No, no. She doesn't want us to do anything. We're not to contact Sharon. But he's John's son. Oh, Pat. I, I, I know this is breaking your heart. If I could just see him... Hear his voice. What if he sounds like John? Oh, stop tormenting yourself. How? We've done this properly. We've asked Helen and Tom, and they've told us what they want, and, and that's that. We must respect their wishes and leave things as they are. Oh, I know, Tony, but it's going to be so hard. Oh, Pat, love... I've got a fresh pack of teeth wipes and some more gloves. Oh, good man, Josh. Put them on the side. Okay. Anything else left to do, Eddie? Once we've swept the water away, we're about done. Oh, I'll do that. We've not made a bad job, neither. The parlour's looking all right. I quite like cleaning out. Oh, better than homework, eh? Oh, I've done that already. Well, most of it. More than I ever did. But this is proper work. And you get paid for it. Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> Well, sort of paid. I get an allowance. Yeah, I know. You keep moaning. It's not enough. I want some proper wages at Christmas. Oh, you'll be lucky. <laughs> Dad, you said if I help with the milking and strawing down... Yeah, all right. You'll get something. Evening, Eddie. Evening. How do milking go? Look, all right. I've uh, whiteboarded another couple. For AI? Yeah. They need separating out tomorrow. Oh, OK. Oh, it was really weird when I came in. What? Eddie's music. I always play music when I'm milking. The little drummer boy. It was seriously weird. Oh, it's very seasonal. Yeah, the girls like a few carols this time of year. If you say so. Oh, just wish it made them a lot more productive. Oh? We've just been looking at the latest yield figures. Oh, how are we doing? Not great. Another dip. Oh, no. Uh, Again? Why is that? Well, I wish we knew. There's no obvious reason. I thought we were heading in the right direction. Well, it's not major, but uh, we're still not getting the return we need from the dairy. Now, which ones have you whiteboarded? Uh. Oh. Ah. Not coming in cheap, Pat. Hmm? The rebrand. Design, printing, publicity. Soon mounts up. Yes. But we're committed now, so we just have to bite the bullet. Careful, Henry. Be interesting seeing the prelim designs tomorrow. Is that when they're due? Mm hmm wonder what they've come up with. We should have some red lines, shouldn't we? Hmm? Things we will and won't accept. I keep thinking he's going to hurt himself with that beaker. Hmm? Oh, he's getting tired. Yeah, starting to. But I'll wait a bit longer till I put him to bed. Yeah. He won't go off otherwise. Will do Helen good, night out? Yes. I'm glad Kirsty rang. Drink with the girls is exactly what she needs. Chance to relax. Oh dear, what happened there? Wouldn't do us any harm either. Hmm? Oh, where's it gone, Henry? Maybe go into Borchester for a meal one evening. Tony, look. Hmm. Oh. The way he's pulling himself up on the stool. Oh, does that all the time. <laughs> He'll be walking any no, day no, now. No, but his expression. Tom was like that when he was concentrating. He screwed his eyes up so tight. Oh, yeah. Henry's becoming very independent. Yeah, he is, isn't he? His hair still amazes me. None of ours had a flop like that at his age. No, they didn't, did they? Sometimes I, I wish... It'd be interesting to see what his father looks like. You know, to put all the pieces together. Yeah. 
Obviously, I never say anything like that to Helen, but you can't help wondering. He's determined to get the beaker back. So, what about going out for a meal one night? Oh. Or seeing if there's anything decent on at the cinema. Oh, I don't know, Tony. It feels good, getting out of the house for an evening. Yeah, but we're so busy with the launch and running up to Christmas. Well, that's why I suggested it. With all we've been through lately, I think we both need to unwind. Ah, oh, yeah, except in a week or so we'll be complaining we're out too often. Christmas drinks and parties. Well... Why don't we wait till then? Ah, you're right. Oh, Tom and Brenda have put together some costings on advertising the relaunch. We'll have to decide how far to go. Tony, did you see that? Oh, dear. Had a tumble, have we? Uh, it's all right, Pat. I'll get it. Uh, did, did you see his face? No. All right, young man. When he landed, he was so shocked. His eyes were wide open. He looked just like... All right, all right. Granddad's got you. Um, sorry, Pat? Who did he look like? No one. No one in particular. He called our Hereford operation a good, efficient model. This is Pip's tutor? Yeah. Tim Wainwright. Seems a decent bloke. Oh, Pip's always going on about him. And he rates what you're doing with the beef? Seems to. Pip's used us as an example in an assignment on cooperative meat marketing. I wish we did stuff like that at school, instead of poetry. <laughs> hey, don't let Bert hear you say that. <laughs> but it's so boring. Why can't poets just say what they mean? Well, if you work hard and get to college, you can do what Pip's doing. Yeah, yeah, I know. <sighs> I only wish the milk was going as well as the beef. Mm. Well, there's nothing obviously wrong in here, is there? No, no, no. You and Ruth keep it on in really good nick. It happens like that with milk sometimes. It used to be the same with us. Yeah? Well, we've looked at the ration. Nothing wrong there. If Pip's too busy doing college work at Christmas and I do all the helping, can I have time and a half, Dad? Time and a half? Go on. I should do, shouldn't I, Eddie? <laughs> Don't drag me into it. Where are we meant to get the money from, Josh? Most people get double on Christmas Day, or even triple. <laughs> so time and a half's a bargain. Proper little businessman you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might get a bit extra. Excellent. And what about Boxing Day? What? <laughs> You're as sharp as your sister, you are. She's got a good head on her shoulders and all. Yeah, well, Pip's got a lot of business sense. Mm, yeah. She was telling me some of her new ideas for pushing asset hills. Um, Lamb's done all right this year, hasn't it? Uh, not too badly, yeah. You said it's been pretty good. Well, it's been reasonable. It's been one of the bright spots, really. Along with the Christmas beef order holding up. Uh, has that been OK? It's about the same as last year. You know, which given the state everyone's in. Well, that's the result. Yeah, so. so you can afford to pay me extra on Boxing Day. Oh, blimey, Josh. Talk about brass neck. <laughs> I'm going to leave you two <laughs> to sort it out. I think you'd better. Yeah, I promised Dad I'd be a man tonight. Oh, yeah, what with? Oh, a little surprise he's got planned for William and Nick. Mm. Right, well, I'll see you then. Yeah, see ya. So, Dad, Boxing Day? Where did I put it? Ah. Come on. Please. Quickly. Hi. Hello? Richard, Sharon, Eamon and family. Oh. We're all busy at the moment, but leave us a message because we'd love to talk to you. Oh. Hello? Sorry about that. Kicks in too early since Eamon fiddled with it. Sharon? Hello, it, it's Pat Archer. Oh. The other week... Can you speak um, up? I can hardly hear you. Oh, sorry. It, it's difficult to... Uh, is that better? What do you want? I've seen a photo of Kylie's brother. Oh. He looks so like... He's John's son, isn't he? Sharon? I've been half expecting you to call, ever since Kylie went to the funeral. Please. Is he? Biologically, yes. The moment I saw him, I knew. In every other way, no. Eamon's his father. But he's John's son. Eamon's been there for him since he was a baby. He's brought him up as his own. Rich calls him Dad. He loves Eamon's parents... He's a very happy, 
sorted out young man. And I'm not going to let you or anyone else change that. I don't want to. No? Then why are you calling? Uh, does he know about John? He knows his birth father died before he was born. And he knows that Eamon is the only father he needs. He's perfectly happy with that. And he's never asked? No. Is that all you wanted? Why didn't you ever tell us? Why do you think? I, I know things were difficult between us. Difficult? Because John was so young when you got together. Oh. You seemed to have so much power over him. He knew his own mind. But... Oh, th th there's no sense in going back over it. No, there isn't. So if that's all... But I... when John died, why didn't you tell us you were carrying his child? Because you and your husband always treated me like dirt. You did everything you could to split me and John up, and it worked. We felt you were driving a wedge between us. And then I heard he'd been killed. But you didn't even have the decency to tell me. Sharon, if we'd known... You knew what we'd meant to each other. Not even telling me. I didn't want anything to do with you after that. Perhaps, lo looking back, we, we should have... But we were going through hell. And I wasn't. I made my mind up. I was going to have the baby. Bring him up by myself if I had to. I wasn't going to tell you or anyone in Ambridge about him. Only a stupid little voice at the back of my head wouldn't shut up. Didn't I owe it to John to tell his parents some part of him hadn't died? Why didn't you? I thought about it for a while. Couldn't think of much else. I wanted to say goodbye to him anyway, to see his grave. I thought, maybe if I go to Ambridge, find out if losing him had changed you any, made you kinder, someone who'd treat me and my child with some decency. Oh, Sharon. So I did the hardest thing I ever did. My legs were shaking when I got off the bus. You came to the farm... Such a long walk. I kept wanting to run away. You were going to tell us. No, I wasn't decided. We didn't understand. If you'd said one word... You didn't want one word from me, Pat. You looked disgusted as soon as I walked into the shed. But if you'd told me... Why have you come here? You spat at me. I've never forgotten the way you said it. I didn't know... I told you I wanted to put flowers on John's grave. And all your husband said was, we don't want any trouble. That's what you thought of me. Trouble. One word of kindness then. That's all I wanted. Oh, God. I've nothing to say to you, Sharon. I've remembered that all these years. It would have been so different if you'd said... You didn't want to hear that I'd loved John. You didn't want to hear I hadn't come to make trouble. Instead of asking me in, you told me to go away. And that was it. You decided for me. You didn't deserve to know I was carrying your grandson. I had no idea. And I wish you didn't know. But it makes no difference. You made your choice back then. You didn't want us to be part of your family, and we're not. Oh, We've all moved on since, <gasps> and that's best. For my boy, and for all of us. So you'll understand. I'd prefer it if you never get in touch again. Oh. Goodbye. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Floss are pulling out? Yeah, well, the few of them we've managed to book. Oh, what a shame, Linda. Well, we were relying on them to do most of the music. Tristram Hawkshaw's been ringing with excuses all week. Bases off on winter breaks, altos required elsewhere. Oh. And now the only two tenors who can hold a tune have fallen out over a mezzo-soprano. Oh, dear. Well, fortunately, Alan's volunteered to cover. Oh. Yes, he's putting together a little group of parishioners singing carols. Well, that's something, but... Oh, I agree, we need more music. <sighs> with tickets selling so fast, we want to make the show go with a zing. I've 
been delighted by the response to my table decoration idea. Ah, that was inspired, Linda. Thank I'll you. have to get cracky myself, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> you still haven't said what you think of this little effort. Ah, yes. It's still in the early stages, of course. Mm. It's a very small walrus, Linda, for a, for a stage prop. It was meant to be basking on a distant flow to give a sense of perspective ah, while we I girls see. dance the seal sarabande. <laughs> well, it's certainly eye-catching, the way the tusks seem to follow you around the room. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have him peering through a ring of pine cones and yew leaves. Lovely. I won't put it in the competition, though. No. Hardly fair on the others if the organiser takes part. Oh, and we can spread the word tonight, can't we? Oh, yes. There's no better time to promote a concert than at lighting up on the green. <laughs> You're not convinced, Helen? No, no, I am. The designs are good. I I'm just trying to imagine what they'll look like on the shelves. Well, I think the Ambridge stands out well. Mum? Mm. No, you're right, Tom. The lettering's good. It gives the product's identity. Mm. But it's not too in-your-face. No. I wouldn't mind using something like this if I take Tom Archer into ready meals. Is that going to happen? I hope so. I rang Hef this morning. I fixed an appointment with their development chef in January. Well, that's good. And there's no reason we can't take Ambridge Organics produce down the same route as well, in time. That'd be a good way of adding value to veg and dairy. What do you think, Mum? I can't remember if I signed the disc or not. Oh, the temperature record in the dairy? I definitely took it out when we finished making yoghurt. I'd better check. Uh, then do you want to go through the rest of the prelims with us? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe later. Oh, without even asking, Susan. Oh, I know. I nearly let rip. Oh, I agree. She shouldn't have done it. The armchair is there for a reason. Oh, to be fair, Neil, Tracy hasn't moved it that far. She'd no business moving it at all. Well, perhaps it was June for a change. It's huh? been in the same spot ever since we bought it. Because I'd lined it up perfectly. So when I do get a chance to sit down, the sun isn't in my eyes. It's at a good angle for the telly and if I want a can I can just reach out to the side table I'll say something to her I think you'd better and you might as well mention the fashion parade while you're at it oh that was only a bit of fun getting the children to dress up mm, you don't mind Chelsea using the rose lampshade for a hat she used my new lampshade. I told Tracy that oh. I'd better go straight back. Oh, she should never have touched that. We've worked hard all our lives to enjoy living here, Susan. Oh, I'd be so annoyed if it's mine. And now we're being crowded out of our own home. We can't go on like this. Oh, come on, Neil. It could be easier to talk when we're down at the green. Short notice, isn't it? I was on a list of standbys in case anyone dropped out. And someone has? Yeah, last night. Family problems or something. Hmm. Are you only taking sausages? No. The biggest Christmas food fair in Felpersham. I want some sterling gold and Borsetshire blue as well. Oh, great. I can let you have plenty of both. Oh, cheers. Right, I better think about rousing Henry. Oh, he's going to love that, Mr Grump. <laughs> <laughs> only while he's waking up. At least having a nap now means he'll enjoy going out. I suppose i better make a move as well. I'm meeting Bren down there. Hmm. But that's been useful, Tom. The prelims are pretty good. Yeah, I think they're excellent. At least it feels like we're slowly making some sort of progress. I wish Mum was taking more of an interest. Yeah, well, you know why she's all over the place. Yeah, of course I do. And I feel sorry for her. Mm, me too. It must be really difficult, opening up old wounds. You haven't had second thoughts about getting in touch? No, not at all. <sighs> Me neither. It would only cause a lot of heartache. Too right, Helen. For Mum more than anyone. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can see the state she's in now. Imagine what she'd be like if she had chased things up with Sharon. If you can bear with us while the silver band take their places, we should be ready any minute. Vicky, 
success. Oh, you asked him? Yes. He's more than happy to sing instead of giving a recitation. Oh, he's got a lovely voice, Jazza. I know. I've asked for a traditional Scottish folk song. Fallon or Patrick can accompany him. <laughs> oh, here we go. Good news, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The missing cornet has manifested itself. <laughs> so we're ready for the countdown. Yay! Now, I'm not very good with numbers, so I need all the help I can get. From five... Five, four, three, two, one! Yay! Oh, look, the bulls excelled itself. Oh, there goes the hall and Woodbine. Mm. Manorfield close. Oh, dear. Honey circle. Oh, that's nice. What's happened to Green Acres? Oh, it's come to a complete standstill that side, isn't it? Any problems, Joe? Oh, no. There they are. Well done. <laughs> hey, and the rest. All the way across Cleveland's. <sighs> oh, doesn't it look wonderful? <laughs> oh, why does Mike have to clean the buckling plant now? <laughs> Don't worry, Vicky. I expect he's like Robert. He'll show up soon enough for the mulled wine. Oh, hi, Susan. Hi. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? I'll get catch you later. See ya. <laughs> Do you want to go over? Oh, and have Linda try and rope me in for cooking at the cabaret again, no thanks. Ah, uh, good point. And while we've got the chance to talk privately... Well, look, I'm not trying to be difficult about your sister. No, no, I understand, Neil. I, I mean, I like having her around. She's better company than any of my brothers. Yeah, so are most of my pigs. But it is getting difficult, having her and the children in the house. In one way, I feel... Oh awfully mean, but they're driving me crackers. Yeah. The best way would be if they moved into number six. With your dad and Gary? Yeah. To be killing two birds with one stone. Tracy could keep an eye on them. Yeah, but it'd be too small. With Brad and Chelsea as well. <laughs> Mum and Dad brought up all of us there. We managed all right. Hmm. Oh, hello, Tom. <laughs> oh, you've got a Henry. <laughs> yeah. Helen's buying us a baked potato. Evening. Hi, Neil. Oh, we must be lovely, wrapped up snug in a little furry bonnet, being pushed round everywhere. <laughs> Don't you let your dad hear you talk like that. It'll give him ideas. <laughs> oh, how's your grand, Tom? Neil told me she took a tumble. Uh, luckily, it was only a sprain, not a fracture. Well, that's a blessing. And it's starting to improve, although she still needs help to get around. So she wasn't well enough to come out tonight, unfortunately. Ah, oh, yes. Mince pie related. The hiatus with the lights. Joe was fortifying himself with some of the free ones from the ball. Whoops! <laughs> it seems he was happily munching away when the queue came. <laughs> he completely missed it. <laughs> it's not the first time he's missed a queue by any means. <laughs> it's a good job Christine realised something was amiss and called out to him. Well, he put it right in the end. Oh, yes. No great harm done. Well, except for the mince pies and my cop, oh, where he dropped one in the rush to switch on. Uh, hasn't the bull been generous with food this year? Oh, they've put loads out. I suspect that's Kenton's idea, to lure in the customers. Oh, Vicky, I didn't tell you. Jolene's very kindly donating the prize for the table decoration competition. Oh, lovely. Uh, will you excuse me, ladies? Oh, yes, of course. I must go and thank Christine for rescuing Joe. Uh. What are they giving? Set meal for four in the restaurant. Oh, that's not bad, is it? No. So come on, let's get busy. <laughs> Drumming up some more entrance. <laughs> Wednesday instead of Tuesday? If possible. Oh, let's have a think. Only, I'm going to the food fair. It's a last-minute thing. Oh, I don't think I've got anything on next Wednesday, have I? Oh, not that you told me. Mm. I mean, if it's not convenient, you can deliver the wieners on Tuesday, like we said. I'll make sure Jazz is around. But you'd rather be there yourself. Ideally. Ah, yeah. Well, I can't see a problem, Tom. It might be early, mind. That's OK. I want to spend some time sorting the hen house next week. Early as you like. Oh, is that Brenda looking for you? Oh, yes. I meant to have got her a glass of punch. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll see you then. Yeah. And thanks, Neil. Bye. I'll see ya. <sighs> the trouble with saying number six is too small. I mean, where else are they going to go? 
that's why I brought in those property guides. And I left today's echo for her to look at. Oh, those aren't the sort of places Tracy's looking for. Why not? Oh, anything she can afford in there is going to be horrible. Hmm? An estate in East Darrington or somewhere in Ollerton. There are some nice parts of Ollerton. She was only saying earlier how much she enjoys being back in Ambridge. <sighs> and if you don't think number six is suitable, it could be ages before something else comes up round here. Mm, oh... Well, uh, look, when I said it's it's too small, I suppose if your dad moved downstairs, say, into the dining room... Oh, yeah, because that's just wasted at the moment. Yeah, that'd give Brad and Chelsea a room, and, uh, well, I know it'd need decorating. Oh, all of upstairs does, really. Yeah, I suppose so. And downstairs, when you come to think of it. Well, I could give it all a quick once-over. It probably wouldn't take much. Trouble is, your dad isn't going to be happy trailing up and down to the bathroom all the time. No, he's not moving as well as he used to. Though I could probably fit a toilet and a little shower in the old pantry. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. And you could always ask Dad and Gary to help out with the lifting and lugging. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, Neil. Uh, We'd have to sort out money for parts, but... Oh, I don't mind giving the labour. <laughs> go into all that trouble for my sister? Believe me, I'd go to a lot more trouble if it gets her and the children out of the house. Oh, come on. You are good to me. Not in public, <laughs> Susan. I won't say anything to her just yet, till you've had a look and, you know, worked out a plan of attack. All right. But as soon as we've got past Christmas, I'll raise it with her. Christmas? It's not that far away, Neil. No? Well, let's just hope we can all survive till then. It looked quite swollen, though Peggy says it's much better than it was. But she's still housebound, Mum. Oh, yes. She hasn't been able to go to the laurels all week. Oh, that must be so frustrating. Ilona's been doing all her shopping. Oh, she's been helping out. She's coming every day. Oh, that's good of her. Even swapped two of her shifts earlier in the week. When Peggy was finding everything difficult... They do seem to get on well. I suppose it's company for both of them. Oh, she's not short of that. When I called round, Lillian had just been and Jenny was coming later. Peggy was perfectly happy. The only thing she grasped about was missing the lights last night. Oh, wasn't it lovely? Marvellous. Apart from the little hold-up at Green Acres. <laughs> yes, I wondered about that. Mince pie related, apparently. Huh? I didn't like to ask too closely. <laughs> oh, I love it, seeing everything light up in the dark. Mm. I thought Chris's display was super. Well, in fact, they all were. It certainly cheered Neil up. Oh? Yeah. He was very gloomy when I spoke to him and Susan early on. I'm not sure what about. Oh, dear. But he'd perked up considerably later, and I don't think it was just the punch. <laughs> it started to put me in the Christmas mood. And the next thing is deck the hall. Oh, Yes. I told Elizabeth I'd go over on Saturday. Mm, Alistair and I must make time as well. I can take Freddie and Lily's presents over then. Oh, did you and Elizabeth have any luck finding a pony? Mm, I think so. You know we went to Westbury? Yes. Well, I think we found a possibility. Casper. Elizabeth took Freddie to see him after school yesterday. And do you know how they got on? Very well, apparently. Freddie was allowed to tack him up and go for a short ride round the course. And that was that. They came back inseparable. Is Elizabeth going to buy him? Once he's been checked by a vet. I might see him on Saturday then. Oh, no, no, it won't happen that quickly. Freddie's got to go back again so they can get used to each other. But Elizabeth says he's thrilled. Good. It's going to be a difficult time for them. Mm. I daren't ask the price. It was a fair one. And Lily's getting her school trip and some goodies to go along with it. She's so excited about that, isn't she? <laughs> well, seeing Paris for the first time. Whenever I call it, Bonjour, grand-mère, comment ça va? <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be nice if someone in the family was a linguist. I promised her a travel guide to Paris for Christmas. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I'm still nowhere near the end of my shopping. And, uh... Have you asked Elizabeth about joining us on Christmas Day? Oh, yes, ages ago. I mean, if Lewis is at his daughter's, it won't be very nice for her and the children, rattling round Lower Loxley on their own. I mentioned it again on Monday, but uh, couldn't get a definite yes or no. 
Oh. Is this because... Yes. She's worried about David coming over for tea afterwards. That's awful. This stupid rift could spoil Christmas for everyone. Come in then, Joe. Uh, no, I need you to come outside, Nick. Oh, what for? I promised you and William a surprise, didn't I? Well, come out here and see it. Right, um, do I need to get my coat? Ah, well, it is a bit nippy. Uh, perhaps you'd better. OK, I'll, I'll just grab it. I've got to turn the iron off as well. I'll, I'll be right with you. Right. Sorry, Tony. Sorry. Uh, what for? I got it wrong again, haven't I? Got what wrong, Pat? Taking more veg to organics. Oh. I rang this morning and asked Tamsin. I'm sure she said they were fine till this afternoon. Oh, they probably are. Then why are you loading up now? I'll do it. This is only a few things for Grey Gables. Oh. Ian's got an unexpected coach party for lunch. Oh, was I meant to be dealing with it? No, he only phoned a quarter of an hour ago. Caught me straight after milking, so I thought I'd just get on with it. Nothing to do with you. Oh, well, at least that's something. I've got so much wrong lately. I thought, here we go again. You haven't been getting things wrong, love. I have. The shop order, getting in a muddle with the disc, and so much else. Oh, Pat, uh, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, I can see perfectly well there is. You were the same yesterday. You're in such a day. I'm fine. You're still very upset, it's aren't you? All right. About not getting in Honestly, touch. Honestly, it's perfectly okay. You don't need to worry about me. It's um, it's absolutely extraordinary, Joe. It is, no. I've never seen anything like oh, it. Oh, and you won't. This is a genuine, one-off, unique piece of craftsmanship. Yeah, it must have been tricky to make. Oh, it was, it was. It took me and Eddie a good long time, especially in welding on the struts. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is, Bartleby don't mind at all. Doesn't he? Oh, no, no, no. He's quite happy with a canopy over the trap, aren't you, boy, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very colourful. <laughs> Nice bright orange, if you Ah, no, that was a bit of luck. It was left in our field by a couple of campers. Oh, so it's really a tent? Well, not that you'd ever know. Except for them little loops where the pegs go through. Yeah, I wondered what they were. Oh, not a very good tent, though, according to the folks who left it. No? No, well, it looked fancy, but then let all the rain in. But don't worry, don't worry. We'll give it a good waxing before the big day. The big day? Well, that's what we've done it for, Nick. Oh, didn't I say? No. Oh, so you can ride in style in all your finery. Oh, sure. That's the way a bride ought to arrive, I reckon, speaking a bit of a show. It's a lovely idea, but... Come I... to me out the blue one evening. Eddie was going to cut the cloth up as hammocks for the ferrets, but I said, I can think of a better use for that, Eddie, and that's how we got started. Oh, you're so kind, Joe. I... Yeah. Well, don't you like it? No, no, it, it's lovely. But... But me and Mum and Helen and Jake and Mia, well, we're all getting changed at Grey Gables. Oh. Yeah, they're providing a room for us before the ceremony. So, well, I don't need to ride down in my wedding dress. Ah, well, you didn't know that, huh? I'd, I'd say Will and I'd use it for going away, but well, we've got miles to go to the airport. Yeah, well, of course you have, of course you have. What? Well, the old fool I am. No, I no, should have thought not. it through proper, us what was happening instead of hugging this to myself as a secret. Oh, Joe, it's a wonderful idea. I love well, it. There ain't no use now. No, it is. It's going to be perfect for something on the day. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah no question. Yeah. Well, well, what's that then? Um, well, I'm not 100% sure yet, but well, after all the hard work you've put in, this lovely trap is going to be absolutely perfect for something. Good girl. You can go back in soon. Oh. Hello, Mum. Have I caught you at a bad moment, Shula? Oh, no, no, it's all right. I'm just toweling down one of our liveries. I can ring back later. Uh, now's fine, really. I won't keep you long, but I thought you'd want to know. Kenton rang soon after you left. Uh-huh. I was still thinking about Elizabeth and Christmas Day, so naturally we got talking about that. Oh, it's all right, Susie, it's all right. Shula? No, no, carry on, Mum. I can talk and tell. Well, I told him everything, and 
I think he's come up with an answer. Oh, what's that? Well, he was with Jolene, so he checked with her. They're going to invite the whole family to the ball on Christmas evening. Well, late afternoon onwards. Ooh, that might do it. They lay on a simple tea in the ploughman's. Everyone can see everyone else if they want to. Oh, but it's big enough to stay out of each other's hair if they don't. That's it. At least it means all the children can beat up. Oh, good old Kenton. He is good like that, isn't he? Oh, that should make it much easier for Elizabeth to bring Freddie and Lily to lunch with us. It'll be so much nicer if she does. As soon as I've got Susie back in her stall, I'll ring. Oh, don't make it too obvious that we've been plotting. <laughs> I won't, Mum. I want to discuss going to deck the hall anyway. I'll uh, mention the bull in passing. Oh, good. And see if it helps Elizabeth make up her mind. Keep your mouth open. Uh, that's it. What's the matter with her, Tony? Uh, she's got a cough. Oh. Well, not a bad one. I'm going to isolate her, see if some aconite does the trick. You finished in the dairy? Yes. Well, I'm finished with the yoghurt. I promised to help Helen start off a new batch of Borsetshire Blue this afternoon, but... Pad? I don't think I'll be much use to her... Or to anyone until I... Oh, love, please tell me. What's wrong? Rich is John's son. He definitely... Yes, definitely. I suppose we both knew. But how did you... I tried not to, Tony. You rang Sharon? Yes. Oh, Pat... I couldn't help it. Even after Tom and Helen I asked could us... not help it. I feel terrible about Helen and Tom, but I, I couldn't stop myself. It was terrifying. When? Does it matter? What did she say? I asked her and she said yes. <sighs> Does the boy know, Rich? Not about us. Just that his birth father died before he was born. Is she going to tell him we're his grandparents? That he's got another family? No. Sharon was very blunt about that. She doesn't want us to make any contact with him. None at all? No. Never. But why didn't she ever tell us? That's what I can't get out of my head, Tony. I'm afraid it might drive me mad. What? She did try, in a way. No, she didn't. How? When... She came here, not long after John's funeral. Oh, no. She wanted to decide if we deserved to know. Deserved? It's not a question of deserving. We had a right. We told her to go away, Tony. Oh, well, wouldn't have if we'd known. It was my fault. No. She remembers it very clearly. I asked why she'd come, but I didn't let her answer. Not properly. We were grieving, and she'd caused us so much pain. She took advantage of John when he was far too young. When he found the right woman in Haley, she took him away from her. She completely dominated him, Pat. I know. But after he died, when she came back, if only I'd kept my mouth shut... If I'd shown that girl any kind of compassion... We were both in a dreadful She would state. have told us... We would have known. John's son would have been part of our lives for the past 13 years. We could have loved him, told him all about John, and I threw that away. How can I ever forgive myself? No, 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 it's not you, Pat, it's uh, us. We both sent Sharon away. If there's a fault, it's mine as much as yours. But how the hell were we to know what we were doing? 